Hey everyone, this is Steve Good and Yuri Cataldo choking on his coffee uh, for our next episode of the Coin Chat. <laughs> oh my God, the timing was fantastic. Steve. Yes, you couldn't you couldn't have possibly decided to choke on coffee at a more appropriate moment. I didn't even say EOS, and you're already choking on the coffee. I didn't say Facebook. I didn't say centralization. I didn't say cartel. Although on the video episode we're running right now, it does say the C chat, as in the cartel chat which is what today is all about. No, it's not. It's go <laughs> actually, this is just what the fork part two, because this crypto world we're living in now has gone nuts on a whole <laughs> totally new is. level of crazy madness. Forget the bear market. There's just a lot of other stuff going on. Let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> the cartel That's chat. Right. So today's right? episode, the cartel chat. Yeah, I'm going to rename the episode today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still just now recovering from my coffee. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. that oh, the interesting. I tried to buy you as, as much time as I could so you could like clean up your own mess. <laughs> I could. I did. Fortunately, did not spill anything on my on myself, um, which I'm surprised at. But next uh, time, yes, wear a white shirt. It'll make it far more visible for everybody else who's watching. It will, and I will drink fruit punch. So <laughs> it'll be well, very obvious for those not watching and listening. Yuri's wearing a dark blue shirt, so you're not missing anything. No, we missed absolutely except, nothing. Except that he combed his hair and he looks great today. I do, thank you. Well, yeah. you know, we're on video now, so I thought I would show up. Well, we're yeah, we're everywhere now. You're, you're <laughs> welcome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I brushed my teeth, if that makes any difference to everybody. <laughs> it does. Everyone yes. appreciates this. Oh, good. All right, so <laughs> let's start with the usual spending Bitcoin. I have failed at that. Have you attempted and failed at that as well? I, I didn't even try. Did I try to fail this week? I've been, you know what? The problem is I have been so disappointed with all the epic fails I've had trying to spend Bitcoin just for the sake of trying. I was actually like reciting back because someone asked me recently, like, like where, so where have you tried spending Bitcoin? I almost need to go back and go through every episode and name off all the places I've been because I was thinking about it. It was like, you know, Rolex dealership, you know, Rolex dealership, Rolex, a Seat car dealership, Swarovski crystals, uh, the penguin shop in Miami when I was there traveling. Um, airports. Airport, yeah, multiple times at multiple airports around the world. Oh yeah, I tried to spend it yep. in a coffee shop and they asked me for the coin. Right. <laughs> so um, so I, I'm almost a little disheartened. Oh yeah, and of course there was the intimacy ladies underwear shop. Of course, that was a classic one right. some time ago. That was a good, uh, that's the one we actually put into the episode and played through what she actually said. So yeah, unfortunately, I'm kind of at the point where you know, what's wrong with people? I mean, come on. It's time to start accepting the damn stuff, you know, and it doesn't have to be Bitcoin. Accept Litecoin instead. Give us something. Right, anything. Accept something. But yeah, I mean, there's more and more products and platforms coming out that have, you know, cards and payment services. In fact, I don't know if you know this about Revolut, but if you deposit, let's say, you know, your euros or dollars or pounds onto the card, you can then use it to buy Bitcoin or Ether and they don't give you a crypto wallet, which is kind of unusual and a little bit weird. So you have to kind of get, get over that part. But the fact that you've got Ether sitting there, when you go with that card and you go spend money, if it doesn't have pounds and you're in the UK, it starts spending from your Ether. So presumably, since you know, we're kind of at a low point right now with the Ether, if you're buying a bunch of Ether now and it goes up, you're going to have that money last a little while longer than planned. So uh, it not, may, not, may not be a bad way to do it, but I mean, that's, you know, about the only thing I can, you know, there's a lot of that kind of stuff happening now, which is exciting. Yeah, it is. So, so there's, there's a new platform you could use to spend money on if you want to. It's Pornhub. <laughs> so Pornhub will now accept Zencash. Uh, and can I talk about this? With my, my wife's probably listening to the episode and later and she's going to be like, <laughs> excuse me, boys, what were you talking about? <laughs> I mean, we're looking for places to spend cash. Pornhub <laughs> wants your cryptocurrency. Smart play. Now. They do. They're not accepting it. Um, it's mostly because Justin Sun, who was the, he's the entrepreneur who bought Bit, uh, BitTorrent. He also is, uh, yeah, was it? He's, he's also behind Tron and they have made a agreement. Apparently. So you can use Tron coins for adult entertainment. Yes. 
Wow. Yes, you can. Okay. Well, we'll have to do an episode on Tron then and just talk about what Tron does because that's an interesting company as well. And actually thinking back on it, when it first came out, their white paper, I recall from a number of people, had a lot of plagiarized content where it was <laughs> copied and pasted from other sources. And of course, they then had to quickly revamp it when they got caught out. So they've, they've salvaged their brand somewhat from that point back some months ago. But that was my first that's impression. And my lasting impression was a fraudulent start to what could be potentially a good crypto project. Well, there you go. Now they've already got a big platform behind them. So it's, Fantastic. it's a start. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they probably misspelled porn and spelled it Tron, but that's another matter of just letters being jumbled in the wrong way with a T instead of a P. <laughs> exactly. Or it's spelled it prawn. Prawn hub. The prawn for all your hub. prawn needs. Mm -hmm. Prawn. As in like prawn. shrimps. As in like the, the shrimp. Yeah, like the shrimp. Right. So you could... So somebody will be like, oh, I thought I purchased So whilst we're at it, we may as well just have prawn coins, turkey coins, cow coins. <laughs> we, we did do the <laughs> How Now Dow Cow episode where we talked about the decentralized autonomous organization. We may as well throw the cow mix into it now and we'll have like, oh, trail mix. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about exactly. absolutely nothing today and there's so much to talk about, you know. We are. We are. All right. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna switch Facebook. Facebook now. Facebook, yeah. They talk about an about face now. And they, like, what do they said? Oh, it's okay. We're going to let you do some crypto stuff now. Right. But a little bit, though. Not like all of it. Not, no, they're not allowing bit. ICOs to advertise, but they're saying that crypto is okay. Yes, crypto is okay, not ICOs. So this leads to our big question. Oh, yeah. Speculation. Do we think that Facebook is now going to get into the cryptocurrency game and potentially buy a platform? So and if they do, what yeah. do you think? Uh, my, here's my ask. Anybody that's checking us out on YouTube or anybody who hasn't come to YouTube and wants to comment, please comment down below and tell us who do you think Facebook's going to buy? We'll have to come up with a gift for the winner. We'll, we'll announce that at some point. We'll come up with something. But I, yeah. I think it would be fantastic if we could be the ones that identified it first on our channel and said, this is who Facebook's going to buy. Because, th I mean, look, they're an advertising platform predominantly, right? Mm -hmm. Amongst right. other things. And then, of course you know, publishing content. So what's it going to be a content play or an advertising play? I could make a few guesses myself, but let's mm -hmm. let our listeners vote and comment on who they think is going to be the acquired taste of Facebook. <laughs> Perfect. If you say Coinbase, you're disqualified. Yeah, no, we're, we're not talking about exchanges here. It's got to be something aligned to their business. I mean, actually, you know what? Let's not put any rules out. If people want to think that they're going right. to buy Coinbase, Go for it. Facebook probably has the money. They probably could afford it, but I don't think yeah, they want to play in the regulated banking space. But yeah, maybe they do. Let's yeah, not sway our listeners. But yeah, uh, it's pretty interesting because there was a lot of comments just in the last two weeks about Facebook and Google trying to control it all. And then they'll you know, launch their own crypto. And instead, what Facebook did was exactly the opposite of what a lot of people predicted and mm -hmm. turned around and said, eh, you know what? We're losing too much revenue on this one. Let's go ahead and let people do it again. And guess what, <laughs> guess what Google's going to do now? Oh, You'll never kind of guess what happened next. <laughs> <laughs> they fell so, in line. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. Google's going to start opening up the floodgates, and so will Twitter. And, of course, YouTube never really did much to ban any of this stuff. I've seen it going all along, so yeah, I imagine I mean, why not? it's... Yeah. Another revenue stream, it makes sense. All right, so moving yeah. on then. So with Bitcoin now dropping below $6,000, and a lot of really yep. happening... Temporarily, so yeah. what... what as someone who's heavily in the space, what trends are you seeing right now? Well, so there's a few different things. I mean, if you look at the trading patterns, I've, I've, I've seen, a few of my friends have been posting stuff on our, on our Telegram group, which are, what's really interesting is like all the charts look identical. Mm -hmm. It's really, really weird. Like every coin has exactly the same trading pattern, which of course yeah. makes absolutely no sense. So that's usually an indicator that everything's being traded together. And there's certainly a lot to say about the futures markets on the CBOE and the CME having something to do with a lot of that. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't have access to it, but I know there's been a lot of shorting of it at, you know, 450 level ish. And it hit that because people wanted to get their contract. So there's a lot of big money moving this in that direction, but there's also a lot of, you know, longer term buys for later in the year and everyone's saying it's going to go up later in the year. So that'll be a pretty good indicator if, if the short market is actually driving the long market or the upward trend later on. So 
that's been you know interesting because it's it's um it's just interesting to see the the level of you know of bearishness and flatness we're seeing in the market and just and it's it's created a lot of blues amongst all the crowd funders mm-hmm. which leads me to my second point which is the more interesting thing which is i mean i'm going to be controversial here for a minute because i'm going to probably get a lot of trolls for saying this but i know uh, i'm saying this because i'm trying to you know point it out but right crowdfunding seems to be dead right now and i'm getting really yeah. really yeah. annoyed with that because either we're in this or we're not in this as as a global consensus driven organization of people trying to drive the value of projects but what i see so why, happening huh? yeah, go ahead. so why, why do you see crowdfunding as dying well, I mean, I see it as dead right now. And I think the problem is that it's this whole euphoria versus, you know, despair thing. We were in euphoria. And of course, money was just flocking into these ICOs, which had, you know, to be fair, the ones that flocked, that got the money were mostly really good ideas. Of course, some probably had bad ideas or were just ridiculous, but there was a lot of money going in. Now that we're in this kind of, you know, era of despair, which has been going on from January to presently June of 2018, you, you see that aligned with that kind of despair and frustration and lack of enthusiasm people just aren't putting their money into the projects now and but the but the really interesting thing is that this almost mirrors how the stock market works in that oftentimes you'll see the retail investor like you and me come in first and then we go oh okay it's down so we're we're not going to do anything and the big investors go oh look it's down now we're going to grab it and they wait till like kind of round two and then they jump in. And I'm working yeah. with or talking to a lot of people with, you know, the bigger money because I'm kind of getting to know the industry better and mm-hmm. getting, you know, getting the opportunity to meet some really interesting vendors and parties and companies out there that are, you know, crypto whale, syndicate type people, hedge funds, VCs. And they're all like lining up the money now. The thing is, they're not doing it with Ether. They're doing it with dollars. Because the way they're sitting is they've got tons of syndicate money or tons of investor money. Those people yeah. didn't start with either. So they're quite happy to get into ICO projects and fund them, but they just don't want to convert to Ether when Ether is going up and down like a yo-yo. Right. They're happy to just kind of, hey, you know what? We'll put in a few million, a few million more, a few million here, a few million there. Great. I mean, it's great that you can get projects funded. The, the frustrating thing is you can get it funded, but then you have to wait for the big money to move. And hey, we've got deadlines because when the ICO finishes, we need to release the coins. When the, when the dates of the calendar you know, say we're going on the exchange, we have to go on the exchange. It means we need to give our coins to you guys by then. If the money's not there, uh, what then? So there's, a, there's an interesting kind of collision that I see taking place between big money is slow. That's always been the case. It's there in no rush. They've got big money. They got to move it from one account to another and they have to go through all their you know, jurisdictional and, you know, legal regulatory compliance, move money around thing, which is exactly what crypto helps us to expedite. But the process of making it go slow means they may actually miss the boat on some of these ICOs because the ICOs have to crack on one way or the other. Um, So it's an interesting dilemma that I'm encountering because I'm now faced with, hey, I can raise, not me personally, but, you know, hey, as a project, we can raise more money but we're doing it by having to do it through dollars, not through ether. And of course the projects are saying, well, hang on a second, we want the money, but we also want it to go through our smart contract because then the rest of the public and the ICO world see that we're raising it and it's public and it's very visible. And when it goes into bank accounts, it takes much longer to get the money in. It's not visible. People don't know what's going on. And it's like this collision of money versus crypto and, and, you know, and decentralization versus centralization taking place right at our, at our very eyes. And I don't really know what to tell people except go with the flow. If the money's there, take it. Mm-hmm. If it's the right money, take it. Make sure, you know. But it's, um, it's a really, really weird kind of just in-between thing. I think this will eventually swing around when these bigger money and bigger investor guys all end up with crypto because this is round one. Yeah. And in round one, I think what's going to happen is they're going to get into lots of ICOs and they're going to have coins in all these ICOs. They'll take some losses, they'll make some gains, and they have to sell it to something. And guess what? They either sell it to Bitcoin or they sell it to Ether. That's when we'll go to the next round, which is now that these guys have got a whole raft of Ether from all their investments of dollars that are moved into coins that are then moved into Ether or Bitcoin, that they now need to put the Bitcoin or the Ether to use. 
which is when they'll, they'll then invest the crypto into the next round of projects. So I almost kind of see this like as a, maybe it's a temporary sort of transitionary period that'll take some time because there's a lot more big money coming in now. That's very visible to me, but it's okay. just going to take a little bit longer because of it. So, sure, sure. so what the fork? I mean, you know, cr- the rest of us who are supposed to be crowdfunding, get off your backsides and start putting some money in and stop sitting around. This is a bear market. Who cares? This is when you're supposed to invest. Buy low, sell high. By the right. way, this is not advice. This is just a fact. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's called the coin chat, not the coin advice. <laughs> Definitely. Coin, not investment advice. So, why, so yeah, so being part of that is the market right now, Bitcoin, again, dropping below 6,000. Does that make you nervous? What, what are some indicators you see that will help bring it up, if any? Well, so I had a, in fact, so th- there's a, I had a really interesting chat just yesterday with a, an old client of mine. And I don't mean old as an old, because he's not that old. I mean, he's a bit older than me. But a, right. a guy that I've known for many, many years. And it, what's, here's the interesting, he's going to be on our chat in a couple of weeks. So we've started talking to him. So uh, we won't say who he is yet, but he was in the world of banking for many, many years. And the interesting thing that he said to me was, there's a higher probability of Lehman's, which is where he used to work, going Mm -hmm. to zero, because we know it collapsed, than Bitcoin going to zero. (laughs) (laughs) So here you've got a guy that spent many, many years working in Lehman's, Credit Suisse, working in banking as a managing director and IT projects for, you know, for you on big system stuff, banking stuff. And. Yeah. You know, not small stuff. And he's left that and now he's playing in crypto. I mean, if that's not a, a, a validation of what's going on, that he said, you know what, I've had enough of this. I'm going to go do something a little more interesting. And he's playing yeah. around with all sorts of things in crypto, trying to get his bearings and figuring out what's what and what he can do in the space. If he decides to stay in it or not, it's another matter. But I mean, it's okay. Things go up and go down. It, we, there's been a lot of speculation about why Bitcoin price went as high as it did. Lots of speculation. Mm-hmm. I don't think we actually know the reasons why. Um, but it might have been a money play. It might have been manipulated. It might be just the way things traded. But it's trading in a range between you know just, just under six and seven. So yeah. isn't that better if it's trading in a range than just clearly going down or going up, it's like such a pace, like an airplane going straight up. If an airplane's going straight up, eventually the engines are going to stall and it's going to come right back down. So aren't we Betty, better, better, Betty, Betty who? Aren't we, aren't we, aren't we better off with something that's a little bit more steady state? So I don't mind this sort of in between thing. I think Mm. everybody would prefer it just going up, up and up, but that's not reality. Yeah. Um, so no, I'm not particularly concerned because everybody that I'm speaking to, as I say, in the bigger money space are moving in. In fact, actually, in fact, that just, just to, to just to compliment that I saw mm-hmm. an article on coin telegraph. I think it was that was mentioning something about, yeah, here it is. ING bank survey reveals interest in crypto will double in the near future. So how's that for verification or validation of what we're saying here? Just as an example, Um, you know, so, you know, I'm not particularly worried about it. I think we're just in the middle of a cycle and you need to have ups and you need to have downs. So listen, everybody that doesn't have Bitcoin, now might be a good time to think about buying it just because it's low. Don't buy it when it's high. Again, this is not advice. This is just observation. The price is low. Buy low, sell high. That's just fact. That's what any money manager will tell you. So I'm not telling you anything different than what everyone else already knows out there that it makes money. So don't despair. (laughs) (laughs) Just write it out. You know, Warren Buffett didn't make his money by selling when it was low and buying high. He's made a lot of money just on the stock market by just playing in the lows. Yeah, buying and then he buys more when it's low. And he accumulating buying. and accumulating and accumulating when it's at the bottom. And he's done yeah. very well following, you know, if you follow his rules and techniques, which we probably all should do a bit more of because it's hard to be disciplined with trading. And I'm, I'm not, I don't like trading because I get too emotional. And every trader mm-hmm. I talk to says, you got to take the emotion out of it, Steve. I go, yeah, but it's my money. <laughs> How am I supposed to not be emotional about losing it? Yeah, you lose it one day, you make it back the next. Yeah, that doesn't work for me. 
Yeah, uh, me either. It's, uh, it's, it feels much better when it's going up and up and up and you're making the money as opposed to the days where it's crashing and you're losing it all. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, is there anything else interesting you're seeing happening? So, I mean, there was um, uh, Andreessen Horowitz and his firm, which yeah. is a, a big, you know, fund, have announced they're going into crypto. I think you actually shared that. We both shared the article with each other. There was another yeah, yeah. article I saw that, you know, that there's an expectation that ETFs, electronically traded funds, will come soon. And the article I saw, which I'll share, of course, I'll share all of these, you know, things that we refer to down in the description below in our, on our YouTube channel. But mm -hmm. they, they, the ETF article said that it expects that the ETFs themselves will drive Bitcoin to 35,000, which is amazing. That's higher mm -hmm. than the price target that Tom Lee from Fundstrat sets for end of year, which is 25,000 roughly. Mm -hmm. um, so that, I mean, look, if you get big money guys like Horowitz dropping in and you've got, you know, ETFs coming in, then, you know, we're in this little chasm of things are about to happen. Watch this space because it's also summertime and summers are quieter. People go yeah, on yeah, holidays, right, they right, take right, a break. Right. You know the expression, right? Sell in May and go away. Mm -hmm. And when do they start buying? Back in August. September. September? Yeah. September. That's right, because Europe's on vacation in, in August. Uh, Europe just takes, yeah, I mean, well, the UK is not as religious about it. But yeah, a lot of European countries do take August completely off or July or August. I mean, what I usually find for me was when I was in a sales role in you know, financial IT, I couldn't do a deal in July, August, because between July and August, one guy was gone and then the other, and there was always a, an approval between at least two people, and there was never both of them there. Right. So I closed all my deals in May, June, or September, mm -hmm. October, you know, consistently. So if this is anything to go by, then big money guys are going on holidays now for the next two months. So just wait, close your yeah. eyes. Go take a holiday break, come back, look at the Bitcoin in September and come back and tell me then, were we right or were we wrong about Bitcoin and Ether and everything else starting to recover in September? Because that's pretty much what I think will probably happen. And that's what a lot of people that I've spoken to have said. So mm -hmm. let's just watch and see. And we'll see if the advice and the information that's been shared with us is accurate. It's a great thing to watch and monitor. Yeah. I look forward to but that. But in the meantime, put your money into ICOs and stop sitting around and watching. Watching doesn't do you any good. And it just gives everybody else an opportunity to get it while you don't. So the ICO world is not dead, but the crowdfunding is. I'm really just, it's annoying me. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, <laughs> it's painful. I like it's what? really painful having right. clients and they're saying, why is there no money coming in? And I say, Ask the crowd why they're not investing. I don't know why they're not putting money in. I can speculate, but I'm not mm -hmm. asking everybody, but I see a lot of conversation, a lot of interest, a lot of expression of, yeah, I'm going to put in, you know, X amount and blah, blah, blah. And they don't do it. And I don't know why. Mm. Uh, just holding back right now, I guess. We'll wait and see. Yeah, they're hodling to the extreme. <laughs> they this, are. <laughs> this, this is where we, we talked about hot, hot, hold on for dear life has gone a little too far. <laughs> <laughs> So what, 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 what else have you been seeing? And you're looking at this from another microscope or, or lens as such. So what, what do you see is going on? Well, I mean, just like the market in general. Yeah. I am or what are you hearing from your friends in MIT? Or what's, you know, you talk to a different you know, crowd of people who are generally really in startup mode of crypto more so than I do. So you kind of there. represent the other side of the coin, which is all the people who don't want to put money in or are afraid. So what do you yeah. hear on that side of things? <laughs> So, so actually, the what I'm hearing more on that side is less actually about the cryptocurrency side and more about just expanding blockchain ap applications into a lot of different markets. So there are, are a lot of private companies, uh, both large and and startup world, who are just spending more time focusing on how they can integrate blockchain into sol solving a solution for something. Um, whether it is like in the in the construction space, actually, which is what I've been looking at too recently. There's a lot of companies coming in now who want to help. Um, it's, it's called building information modeling or management. BIM. Yeah. Um, and so, so how can you Why run... the construction space in particular then? It's, so it's just, so there's a lot of different industries that can be, I would say just uh, 
increased with efficiency. And that's one of those where there's a lot of information that has to be shared around. And so doing that kind of information on a blockchain would make it more secure, more efficient and allow basically the building to do, to alert the people in charge of when it needs to be like when things need to be regulated or changed or all kinds of things. So it's just, right. there's a, a lot of different players now finding ways they can make systems more efficient in different areas. And it's, it's similar across a lot of different platforms, but it's just, it's all about just again, efficiency and security, which a lot of companies are, are really focused on. So right. That's what I see more of on, I see less cryptocurrency stuff, at least in this area and more of just solutions. Okay, so, so they're talking more like the blockchain benefits and the ways it can be used in different industry sectors to deploy, yes. to add value, not so much about the individual coins, not about the individual ICO projects. Right. Okay, right. so it's a much more industry-focused discussion. And what about kind of your friends who aren't in crypto? What are they saying? The, my friends who aren't in crypto, they want to know more about crypto and they want to know what's happening. They, again, there's so, you know, Bitcoin's not going away. There's a lot of buzz that keeps on happening with it as the price rises and falls. And so there's a lot of people who, are, who want to get involved, but they're scared because of the giant fluctuations in the price. But right. they still ask a lot of questions like, why should I pay attention to cryptocurrency? What's happening? Like, what does it mean? Um, you know, what are long-term, you know, what are the long-term factors? Is it really like the internet back in the 1990s or is it internet back in the 1980s? Like there's a lot of, that's interesting. A lot of, yeah, there's a lot of people I've seen. Well, at least that analogy, I've seen people make the 1990s. Yeah. The 90s. As I think I've like, said to you before, I, what I've often seen was that from all the IT implementations I got involved with in my previous days and career, there was always this thing about, you know, kind of three phases of implementing a system. And the first was sort of basic information. The second was to, you know, build function or to build just basic functions. And the second was to turn those functions into some form of an application as in mm -hmm. an app. And so I'm, I'm making a comparison here of internet being about just generally functions and information only that then led to, various forms of web-based and you know, mobile phone apps. And the third phase, which was always done in the, my, the world of IT that I lived in the last 20 years, was uh, process. Mm -hmm. And what blockchain represents to me is, you know, an app is kind of not really a process. Okay, I mean, sure, you might buy an airplane ticket, but that's not, that's not an end-to-end -end business process that starts from something and ends at something else. Blockchain, to me, is a much greater way to go across multiple systems for example to manage a you know uh, a, a flow process in the sense of manufacturing process everything mm -hmm. from the the creation of that product where it moves through uh all the way to the end user where it's received and that's that's a pretty fundamental shift from internet which couldn't really do that but blockchain right. is just that next layer so it kind of feels to me like you know that makes a lot of sense to have these discussions around the benefits of blockchain as a technology notwithstanding all the startups but you know right. it's yeah. a it's an interesting discussion yeah and that process you just described there is a um what is it university of north carolina i think right now that's actually doing that so they have a separate factory facility where they are uh, going through the manufacturing process and having up different blockchain applica or blockchains uh monitor every single way process um sorry every single step of the manufacturing process and and seeing how that operates so right. it's being tested and pushed right now in, in academic and then also startup settings. So this is going to be really exciting in the next few years. Oh, absolutely. I think there's a lot. I mean, I've seen comments from even banks saying that, you know, blockchain's not going away. We were surprised there's not more. In fact, there was something else I saw in the news. Um, NASDAQ did a report mm -hmm. that only 5% of, of the stock market IT providers have done anything in blockchain. I was actually surprised it was that high. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, who knew that that was, but that's a report from NASDAQ that came out, you know, uh, again, I saw that on Cointelegraph. So thank you, Cointelegraph yeah. for helping me to stay informed. But that's a really interesting thing to know that, you know, if 5% have done it, that's mm -hmm. a great step in the right direction to see that these things are actually being deployed and used. Oh yeah. So do you want to talk about EOS before we, uh, wrap up today's discussion and talk about the the cartel chat which is what we're really here to talk about <laughs> or not really here to uh, talk about but i feel like eos is easy to hate on right now um 
Maybe you should talk about ES Mark. No, I'll no, 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 no. This because remember we had our little pluses and minuses, and I, I, you gave it a vote one way, and I gave it another, and you know, I. What bothers me is that there were some early discussions that came out from some, you know, from Hacker Hacker Noon, I think it is, mm -hmm. that does yeah. all these analysis, and I mean, brilliant analysis from them on, you know, the idea that EOS could end up as some sort of a cartel of a small number of people that have a lot of control over the coins that actually. Right get all the voting power, which means it's not decentralized anymore. It's a cartel. You may as well go to Italy, you know, fly down to, to Naples and join the rest of them, if you know who I mean, mm -hmm. uh, or, or go to New York City or wherever they're hiding, and, and join those cartels or, you know, whatever. Because, I mean, this is sad to see that a small group of people can have that much voting power to the extent that there are individuals complaining that they're not allowed to vote the way they want to vote and they're being told to vote another way or else. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, that. that's all there's rumors about this. I don't know how much we can substantiate, but right. you know, look, there's, there's always a shred of truth when people are out saying stuff like this. There is. And that was, and yeah, I think the same article popped up in, in our the telegram chat. Um, yes. Yeah, where there's like, there's trying their uh, EOS is threatening to sue 27 different nodes if they don't obey their orders. And yeah, so, so and by the way, a node is nothing more than a person's computer or computers just sitting there yeah. with the coins there for the purposes of validating transactions. So isn't that the whole point of consensus is either you consent to everyone else or you vote and you dissent. Mm -hmm. And that's a vote. So if we tell people how to vote, then we're not really providing a, uh, an environment of autonomous, decentralized anything. We're telling people what they're supposed to do or, you know, shape up or ship out, which is actually was crap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And was it recently? We also posted this. MIT Technology Review also did a story about them um, and how they just, it's clearly MIT does not like EOS uh, or ES, but uh, it's just basically going to be centralized, ruled by fat cats, is, is what the, the gist right. of their article was. And, um, and on the flip side, there yeah. was a uh, regulatory body in China that said that on, as far as their ranking of coins go, they ranked EOS number one. Oh, see, there you go. There's like... So, I mean, just to give everybody a balanced point of view, China says, yay, MIT says, boo. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which MIT is a little bit harder to... They're a little bit academic on a lot of different things. Yeah, but they I'm not get... sure if, you know, how, how analytical is the Chinese government really? I mean, you know, they're not That's crypto true. savvy. It's... They're about as crypto savvy as the SEC, probably. Sorry, SEC. You know, probably. Well, given oh, that yeah. they're, you know, their their fake website for um, for crypto hacking, whatever it was, the crypto scam website was hardly a crypto scam site at all. So, you know, right. it, it was, was something entirely <laughs> different. They got it wrong. Yeah. Well, the point of it being obvious was one thing, but the point that they missed all the things that were supposed to make it look fake or scammy. Right. You know, but I guess anyway, we're we're going off tangent, but. We're going yeah, but so, I mean, so going back to the whole idea of centralization, I think we need to remind people that the whole idea of, cent of decentralization is to enable people to have the ability to vote and vote freely. And it's mm -hmm. lots and lots of people, and not just about the people voting, but the systems need to be decentralized rather than controlled centrally. There shouldn't be a central location where systems are running. They're supposed to run on a global basis, completely networked around the world without anybody, any one person or one group of people controlling them. Um, so, you know, I, I mean, EOS is not the only example of, you know, projects out there that are somewhat centralized. A lot of them tend to start somewhat centralized in order to roll out more effectively. Certainly if you roll out your own blockchain, you need to be very careful how you do it because if you get 51% of it basically being hacked, the whole thing can right. basically be overrun. So that's always a danger as well. So it's understandable to start something centralized, but we shouldn't be hearing things like the word the cartel chat, I mean, oh, sorry, the coin chat, talking about how cartels are being formed in crypto, because that's really not what we're, I mean, fine, we'll expose it if that's what we do, but I'd really like to be talking about the more positive things, and it's sad when news like this comes out, which mm -hmm. sours things at the same time that there's a bit of a bear market going on, so people feel a bit frustrated, I'm sure. Yeah. And yet yeah, we are. see lots of good news, it just gets overlooked. The fact that we see big money coming in, that we see ING saying stuff's happening. Oh yeah, Malta, by the way, did you hear about this? Malta also, no. they, uh, they have approved three types of blockchain crypto bills 
in the parliament in the in the, some sort of parliament meetings of some sort. So uh, I don't have the, I didn't I didn't go through the details of all the different things they're approving. But you know that you know that um, Binance is moving to Malta, mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, crypto startup ICOs are now starting up in in Malta. So Malta has suddenly become like the new hotspot where people are going there over Estonia and Switzerland, which I find amazing. That is amazing. Yeah, it's yeah, really it's like, Malta. suddenly it's like, like everyone talks about Malta. It's like, I need to go yeah. for a visit. It's just an island full of beaches. I mean, how bad can that be? That sounds pretty awesome, actually. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm just, as you're you- checking as you're checking it saying, out, right? It's, it's I'm so, checking it out, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful there. Huh. Well, there you go. Right, well, so anybody that wants well, to go to Malta, go. let's let's have a, a blockchain summit. Uh, and, and we'll yeah, and we'll talk about crypto, and we'll try to. Or I don't know, why not? That'd be fun, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. We'll do it. Yeah. So, anything else you want to talk about today, Yuri? We've had a lot of fun discussions about all the crazy things going on. The what the fork part two really, because there's a lot of really yeah. weird things going on in crypto right now. So I think we've done a real good job of sort of just slamming yeah. and. Jamming it all into 30 minutes. <laughs> we have, yeah, I've been covering the, the variety. No, I mean, we've got, we have a lot of really good interviews coming up. So I'm excited about that. We certainly do. We've got a, yeah, actually, that's well. a good point. We've got some really exciting yeah. guests that are lined up now that are, we're just getting them finalized on the dates and times, but we've got some really cool projects that we've got coming in. People we've talked to, we've got some really good interviews coming up with some bigger names in the industry, which I'm really mm -hmm. excited about. So, um, yeah, so stay tuned, everyone. It's been a, a lot of fun today. Uh, till next time, to the moon.